You win again, extraterrestrial beast. Games are just a fun way to waste time, right? Not necessarily. Playing games could lead to new ways to combat modern threats. That's what we're looking at today in NATO Science. Around the world, people spend billions of hours a week playing games. But what if, rather than playing games aimlessly, we could divert this time and effort into solving security problems? Our scientist in Ankara has more. I always remember a military trainer telling me, I have students playing Fortnite and I'm trying to teach them using PowerPoint. We use games at NATO to play through different scenarios. In the future, threats could come from all sides. Disinformation, urban warfare, cyber attacks, civil unrest, robots, drones, even augmented humans. Using games helps us imagine these scenarios. The game is on, but how does it work? We give our teams a problem and assign them different roles. Red team are hostile forces. Green are the legitimate government. Blue is NATO. Yellow might be other non-governmental factors like aid workers or displaced people. Imagine a mega city of 10 million people divided into zones based on ethnicity. A hostile country uses those divisions as an excuse to capture the city's port, which is a lifeline to the citizens. But the hostile country doesn't use regular troops, they use unmarked paramilitary forces. Whatever methods NATO might use to stabilize that crisis, cyber, information or kinetic, will have consequences for the population. A facilitator watching the game runs up a software that uses an algorithm that predicts the effects of each action. A riot, one point up the crisis meter, an epidemic, another point. If the crisis meter runs too high, NATO loses. The game is designed not to be won, but rather to manage the crisis and restore stability, which is one of the NATO's core tasks. But the game isn't the interesting part. It is the people who are playing. Where the science comes in is that we observe cognitive reactions. Although NATO is a consensus-based organization, we want argument. It is what we call matrix gaming. NATO needs people asking questions they haven't asked before, because these might be the questions that we need to answer to keep peace and security in the future. Next episode, we'll take you to Florence in Italy to meet a robot taking the lead in the fight against landmines. Check out the rest of the videos in the series to learn more about NATO science.